Hello guys and welcome back. So moving on from here, here we need to actually utilize this attribute set, right? We need to do some uh, uh, notifications when they're changed. We also need to apply basic values uh, using gameplay effect because those values are not initialized yet. Okay, so back here in our uh, character base, we need to of course have that. Okay, so let me uh, uh, include Uh, you attribute set base, yeah. Set attribute set base dot h. Doesn't know about that. May have a typo here. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't have to have you. Yeah. So every set base, I guess the header does have the ability system component, but it, I think it's still better to have that in there in, in case we remove it. So basically another U property. And that's gonna be U uh, attribute set base pointer attribute set base. Okay. And then attribute set base, of course, equals to another create default sub object and you attribute set base and then we can call this guy just attribute set base okay and so with that we just need to say hey uh, let's hook this up right let's hook this up uh, I guess we can do that in uh, begin play or somewhere so that we can band those uh, those informations. Um, so in this case, we can create a new make them all at least protected. Void. Oh, actually, we need to initialize those guys first. So. Uh, initialize gameplay ability okay comp okay, we need to initial initial initialize that first uh, so this uh, this does nothing more than say uh, tell the, the the ability system component uh, initialize uh, ability actor info and we need to tell it who is the owner actor who is the avatar actor. Uh, so those two things can be the same, which is basically this character, right? That's the owner and also the avatar actor, but the avatar actor can be something else. Um, like if you're shooting a projectile, for example, that could be, you know, the avatar actor could be the projectile. Or if you just have a whole lot of like different meanings, right? Then owner actor could be something else. So that can be differentiated, but let's just go for this and this for now. All right, but there's a, actually a problem here. This is only setting it up in in here, right? We need to also, so here we do need to find a place to do this initialize, right? Let's see. Um, so this has to be initialized both on the server and also on the client. Uh, we know where to do the client part because the player controller, uh, player controller has its part that we have been uh, doing with the UI initialization, which is the here, right? This is called on the client, so we can also just do it here for the client to initialize the um, ability system component. So if get pong, I guess we just cast it, I guess. Because again, this has to be done with casting uh, a uh, character base pointer pong as character base will be equals to cast and then a character base and we're gonna cast the pong we passed in. Okay, now if p now this is the 
so the casting will actually give you like a null pointer if it doesn't work, but that's not the dynamic casting functionality. Again, it's it's using a null pointer here if it doesn't do that. With has any cast flags? I don't know what that is. <laughs> so, okay, what, what, what we can do is then let's say p um, initialize. What do I call that thing? Let's take a look. Initialize gameplay ability comp. You know, I think I made it private in this case. Go take a look at that. Oh, it doesn't know about it. It knows about the character base. It's it's private, so I guess we can move it up, or maybe have like a public interface. Nah, don't know. Let's, let me just put it in here for now. You can do Control L to get rid of a line, just like Visual Studio. Okay, so player controller base should be now be able to. Oh yeah, that's right. Pomex <laughs> character base. Then we do this. I think I put it in public now. Let's take a look at that. <laughs> it's protected. Yeah, you can hold it on Control Shift, Alt, and up and down to move things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alrighty. So that should allow the player controller to initialize it. Okay. Now this is on the client. We have to do the same thing on the server side. Okay. And that can be done on the server function we can override, uh, which is called possessed by. Okay, so we can do that in the private private sector. Uh, virtual void. Oh. Uh, <coughs> possessed by. Okay, <laughs> I believe that's the server function. So let's take a look at that. But that's the pound then possessed by. I only caught on the server, right? That's good. So um, we're gonna do it in here. So super. Oops. Yeah, possessed by, and then we can initialize player uh, as game playability system component. <laughs> okay. Right, that's that's the thing needed to initialize uh, the component. Okay, and after that, we also have to kind of like uh, set up some callbacks. Okay, and so here, let's see what we can do. We can maybe do the begin play in there. So I'm gonna do a. Uh, private function void set up mm, attribute set callbacks attribute, uh, attribute set uh, callbacks I believe uh, this is basically the function you can Define yourself, and in here, yeah, let's call that in the begin play. Okay, uh, so here what we can do is we can, uh, okay, let's just get the ability system component, get game gameplay. Uh, Attribute value change delegate. Okay, and and also uh, we need to specify the I believe this takes something, right? Yeah, gameplay attribute. <coughs> yeah. 
gameplay attribute. Oh yeah, that's that should be um, attribute set base get house attribute. I believe this function is not something we created. Uh, it's done by the macro. So if you so that's basically what this accessor does is create a new function called the property getter, right? So this creating a this creates a function get property name and attribute, right? Get house attribute in this case. And it's gonna give you the attribute more like a you know a type kind of thing. Okay, so going back to here to the callbacks. Okay, house attribute, and then this delegate. Right, and then we'll be um, used to add you object to adding us as a callback. Okay, and the callback will be whatever. So a character base house changed, I guess. Okay, and then we can have a few more. Uh, that's basically uh, the callbacks. So get mana attribute, get max house attribute, and get max mana attribute. Right. So that's going to be all the attributes we need to change. So mana changed. And this is going to be max house changed. And this is the max mana changed. Okay, that's going to be the callbacks. Um, I will need to implement those things. Okay, you function void max house changed okay and i'm going to duplicate that three more times uh, this should be uh, this this is house changed and this is a max house changed this is a uh, mana changed and max mana changed okay that'll be the callbacks And I guess the delegate will take take that. So I need to copy that and go back here to the implementation. Data, I guess. <laughs> I guess it doesn't know what this is. So we need to go look for the header, which is um, uh, gameplay effect types. Okay, so let's go back and add that header. <clears throat> okay, that should allow this to yeah, I guess that cannot be your function then, because it it doesn't like that type to be part of the U function. Okay, yeah, that will work. So let's go ahead and implement these guys. Now we can react to those in whatever way we want. In this case, we can probably just say get the UI and update it for now. Yeah. Yeah, let's call it in the begin play. Okay, but before we do that, let's do a log. Right, you log log temp warning text house changed to okay and then we do a percentage string and we just say actually flow should be fine data Current value, new value, I guess. And that's going to be a float, I believe. Yeah, it's a float. Okay. 
So that way we can just log it out. Okay. Right, so the whole time we'll be setting up um, basically registering and hook up the callbacks from the ability system. So when there is something changed, ability system will broadcast with this delegate. We're subscribing it with our function here, which in this case will uh, have some logging. So this is going to be max health changed. And this is uh, mana and max mana. I believe it's better to have some space in there. Okay. Right. So those callbacks should be fired when we change those attributes. Question is, how do we change those attributes? Right. So let's go ahead and compile this. Uh, we could do that in, with a quick test by uh, uh, using something we called gameplay effects. That we can we can probably do that in the uh, in Blueprint, I think. Okay. So let's wait for the compilation to finish. Oh, I have some arrows. Let's see what's in there. Oh yeah, I forget. To, I always forget to do that for some reason. <laughs> so this has to be uh, using the address of our function. So that we're passing the function pointer. All right, compilation is finished. Uh, let's go ahead and try it. So I'm going to go to Sparrow here. And then we can apply some gameplay effect in here. Oh, actually, we need to create one. So back here to the blueprint, I'm going to go create a new folder called it's gameplay abilities. Okay, and then I'm going to go create a new folder called gameplay effects. Okay, and then here I'm going to go create a new blueprint class. And then that's going to be based on the gameplay effect. Okay, and then select, I'm going to call this guy GE, gameplay effect, uh, initial value maybe. Okay, so this one will allow me to set up the initial values for those attributes. Okay, so in the gameplay effect settings here, I'm going to say this is going to be instantly applied. I'm going to add four modifiers everyone is modifying one of the attribute we set up in the attribute set which is health max health mana and max mana so i'm going to set those up okay let's setting those four things and we're modifying with uh, a uh, override in this case and override those values and we're overriding these values with the magnitude of for example health will be 200 and max house will also be 200. And then the uh, mana will be 200. And then uh, max mana will also be 200. So basically we're saying, hey, we're gonna override all four of the, all, the, all of those attributes <laughs> to be <coughs> 200 as their value. I'm gonna go ahead and compile and save that. This of course is an effect we can apply to Sparrow here. So we can maybe do a test here. Um, let's say uh, Q button, right? When we hit the Q button, right? We're gonna do um, British system component <clears throat> apply gameplay effect to self, okay? And that will do that. And the gameplay effect class will be GE initial value here, okay? Oops, what's the wording here? Yeah, we can call this in the interface call get ability get ability system component yeah now do better i guess yeah so we're asking the component we're going to apply a gameplay effect that's this one the component will take it and then apply that to self in this case and by doing so it's changing the attribute stat to these guys okay so that those values will be changed um all right. Uh, one more thing, though. This has to be on the server, I believe. So, I'm gonna do a custom event and call this guy server test. Okay, and I'm gonna connect that over there, and this one will be uh, run on server. Okay, 
and we hit the Q button, we call server test. Cannot really do that for some reason. I should be able to call a function in it. <laughs> Don't know why I can't. Just bad typing. Okay, so now when we hit Q button, it's going to ask the server to apply a gameplay effect to the ability system component, which is this one. Again, this one will say I'm going to alter those guys to all 200. Right, the gameplay effect, uh, the gameplay component, ability system component will do that to the attribute stat. Okay. I believe it's finding the component or something. Like there's no specific way that we're saying that which one is the uh, attribute stat in this case. Okay, but it's it should be able to do that. So let's go ahead and try this. Right, so we'll play the game. Hit Q button. You can see now, right, we have all these uh, <laughs> warnings here, right? House changed, max house changed. And they're all, I think that's happening twice because it's calling on the server and that's propagating to the to the client, so that's happening twice. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah, so that's happening on both. Yeah, okay, so let's uh, go ahead and maybe propagate that to the UI real quick. Okay, so we're gonna Oh, what's that? I don't really need that. <laughs> so I'm gonna include our player controller base. Okay. And then we can tell the player controller things has changed. Uh, so I guess we can have some functions to interface with that. So void um, house changed. Um, mana changed. Um, max house changed. Um, Max mana changed. Okay. Uh, float current value and float uh, old max value and float uh, old value, I guess. It's the same thing we're trying to. Um, to implement in other systems. It's a lot of calling backs. We probably can simplify this a bit more. Uh, but let's make it work first. Okay. So those are the functions we can call from the player character. Right. And here we just say if in game UI. Right, we can tell the UI, hey, house BP. I don't, I don't remember the function here. Let's take a look at that. Uh, BP on house updated. Oh, it gave me UI, that's why. <laughs> uh, house updated, right, and then current value. Right, uh, max value. Old value. Okay, and yeah, when we do that, we're gonna do that to this one also. If in game UI, in game UI, BP, um, mana updated and then same thing current value in max value and then old value here 
uh, these guys we don't do anything yet I don't think we need to do, do to do anything yet uh, so let's not worry about that and this is hooked up here and we just need to call it in the character base of course so right so instead of doing this logging we can now say get controller controller base because we can do if we can probably cast it once and just use it right after in every other instances because this is casting kind of a lot. <laughs> Your controller base and then uh, on house changed. And then we can say data new value. And we also want to tell the max value, so we need to get the attribute. Okay. So uh, we can do that by. Attribute set base get max house that should uh, give us a float. Yeah, that's gonna be the max house. Oops. Yeah. Uh, don't need have a don't need to have that. A max house and then old value which the data have that old value okay and then we do the same thing for the mana changed okay so I guess we can do uh, this could be locally done Yeah, we can refactor this later. This is getting too long, so let's just make it work on the UI, and then we can maybe do some refactoring later. Um, manage changed. Okay, and get max mana. Old value. Yeah, that should be it. So let's go ahead and compile this. Now, whenever we hit the Q button. Right, we'll see the house and mana updated and then reflect it on the UI. Hopefully, right? Hopefully if everything is hooked up properly. Right, go ahead and play the game. You can see when I hit the Q button, you can see how they're changed. Uh, we can also uh, change these to two player. I can go to this other one. Where am I? We can click here and it's gonna eventually get here, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Q button does the, the, the thing, right? Yeah, Q button does the same thing here. Uh so let's just take a look at the power of, of gameplay ability uh gameplay effects. So let me uh create another blueprint class and gameplay effect. I call this guy GE uh, reduce house. Okay, so this one will do a duration effect, and it's gonna be a periodical duration, which means for every one second in uh, ten second, I'm gonna modify the house every time by adding negative 10. So which means that when, when this gameplay effect is applied for the next 10 seconds, every one second will reduce negative 10 or reduce 10 out of the house. Okay, let's take a look at that. So I'm gonna go here to the, the gameplay effects, uh, actually to the Sparrow here, let's do that with a different different server function. Uh, server test reduce health, maybe. Okay. And then this will do the same thing. But this will use the other one, reduce health. And we can try that with the E button, I guess. 
the where is the E button? Here, <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm gonna call server test reduce health. Okay, so when we hit the E button, the health will be gradually reducing for every one second by ten. Let's take a look at that. Guess it's easier to also see like a bigger UI. So I'm gonna change that to something bigger. I guess 512 by 32, let's just double that on size and numbers can also be doubled. So 12, 16, yeah. Okay, now back here to the main UI, we can shift its health bar even higher. Okay, that way we can see the numbers, it was too small. All right, so we have 100, 100, right? We'll hit Q button to bump them up to 200 and hit E button. Doesn't do anything. So it must be something we need to check. E button just reduce, reduce health. Let me um, toggle a breakpoint. Oh yeah, this is not replicated. That's why you need to make it replicated. Yeah, I probably don't need to toggle that anymore. Okay, so now if I hit Q, that's gonna give me the full health. Hit E button. You can see how it's reducing every one second reduced by 10. And it's gonna do that in 10 minutes. 10 seconds, right? That's the power of gameplay effects. By using that, we can create all sorts of interesting changes to those uh, attributes. Although it's uh, kind of <laughs> taking forever to set up, right? But you can see that after it's setting up, all we have to do is just set up a bunch of uh, a, a bunch of gameplay effects gradually, gradually. Harder to set up, more flexible in the future. Okay, that's gonna be it for this video. Hopefully this is not too long, <laughs> this is half hour. So let's stop, stop the video now and in the next video we can maybe talk about, uh, uh, I guess we have the basic things showed up. Maybe we can talk about other, other things like um, minimap or fog of war, those kind of things, or and also gameplay abilities at some point. I'm not decided yet, so we'll, We'll have to see. Okay, see you guys next time.